Hi, this is a uh, tutorial introducing triangulated structures or pin jointed frames. These are structures that engineers or structural engineers make use of uh, as they provide stiff and light structures um, which can be transported and erected uh, relatively simply. Now let's have a look. The basis of a triangulated structure, you're going to find this hard to believe, is actually a triangle. And the good thing about a triangle, as far as engineers are concerned, is that the triangle holds its shape. When forces are applied to it, and I'll give this a couple of supports down here, it doesn't deform, it holds its shape. Unlike a, uh, a square, for instance, if a force is applied to this square, then it would tend to kind of just lean over and it would only be as strong as the bending strength of its members and its joints. So it's relying on its joints holding steady, uh, which is um, not as strong as just the structure itself remaining steady. So it's not just squares, lots of structures, when you load them up, they just um, they just haven't got what it takes. They're not as good as triangles. Triangles are great. Here we go. So I'll give this a couple of supports. Now then, the kind of supports that I've given um, given here uh, are, are a couple from a very small range of supports. You can actually uh, there's there's uh, more than, more than three types of supports for triangulated structures, but most triangular structures that get designed, they get designed with a pin support at one point, which is provides restraint in the horizontal and in the vertical direction. A horizontal roller, which provides restraint in the vertical direction, but allows free movement horizontally. And vertical roller, which provides restraint in the horizontal direction, but allows free movement vertically. Now you can get spring supports and displacement supports. Uh, however, these are enough to be going on with. Now, triangular trusses are generally drawn on a two-dimensional sheet of paper, and uh, engineers often analyze them as two-dimensional structures, but one of the most important things you must remember is that they are actually three-dimensional. They live in a three-dimensional world, and uh, the um, the restraint of triangular structures is very important. That's uh, that's as much as I need to mention at the moment. But it's something when you come to the design side of triangular structures that you must bear in mind. Now let's have a look at this. the next interesting uh, aspect of them is their statical determinacy. Now the statical determinacy relies on um, uh, the statical determinacy can be checked using a simple formula m plus r minus 2j equals 0. Uh, the easiest way to uh, explain how this formula works is just to uh, check a couple of simple structures. So here's one simple structure, be a kind of bridging affair that you might get in a factory that's carrying a bit of process plant. And I'll give that a pin support at one end and a roller support at the other. That's typically how um, pin jointed trusses and triangulated structures are supported. Now let's check uh, in this equation M stands for members, R stands for restraints, and J stands for joints. Yeah, nothing there to trick anybody. So, how many members are there for this structure? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. How many restraints are there? Well, there are two restraints at a pin support, and there's one restraint at a vertical roller. So, that's three in total. How many joints are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, minus two times six. Well, how does this add up? 9 plus 3 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, the whole thing adds to 0, it's statically determinant. Let's have another structure. Let's say that I had a, um, a tower structure. There it is, give it some bracing, 
and give it similar supports a pin and roller horizontal roller now let's check this one out number of members okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen number of restraints one two three can't quite see that, but there's three restraints, plus three. Uh, number of joints, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thirteen plus three, sixteen, and it's two times eight, sixteen, all adds up to zero. Therefore, it's statically determined and we're happy. Well, not really. At the same time that you're checking for statical determinacy, you should also be checking for mechanisms. Triangle is a nice strong shape, a square is not so. It can sway and it can, um, because of that, um, we say that it can form a sway mechanism. And so this sway mechanism is far, far less strong than a, a, a rigid triangle. Any structure that has one of these sway mechanisms in it is unlikely to act as a true triangulated structure. And you can see here that we have a sway mechanism in the middle. That's not correctly braced. And when I apply some forces to this structure, the whole thing is just going to wobble over at its center. Okay, let's just to drive this point home, let's have a look at another structure. This looks like a kind of arched structure. Oops. And this time, because it's arched, I'm going to give it a couple of pin supports. Now, is this statically determinate? Well, let's check it out. Members, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Restraints, that's a pin, so that has two. That's a pin, so that has two. So that's four in total. Number of joints, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, minus two times six. Eight plus four, twelve. Two times six, twelve. Yep, again zero. Well, it's statically determinate, but are there any mechanisms? And the answer is yes. We've got this kind of squarish shape in the middle, which is just going to, as I apply load, the whole thing is going to distort. So, so as well as checking for statical determinacy using this equation, we must also check for mechanisms. Well, what does statical determinacy mean? If something's statically determinate, it means that we can use the three rules, three laws of statics uh, to um, calculate the forces and all the members in the structure. It's that simple. The three laws of statics are that when I resolve vertically, the sum of all the vertical forces adds up to zero. When I resolve horizontally, the sum of all the horizontal forces add up to zero. And if I take moments about any point for the structure, the sum of all those moments are going to add up to, you guessed it, zero. So I can just use these three tools to carry out my analysis of trusses. Now, uh, one thing you get in, in uh, trust structures is you often get diagonal members. And a diagonal member will contain within it a diagonal force because all the forces in all the members in a truly triangulated structure are either pure compression or pure tension okay pure compression or pure tension so all I'm looking for is a single force in this member and that if I have a diagonal force I can also represent that by its vertical component and its horizontal component H. So that force there can be represented by a vertical and horizontal component acting together because it has a vertical component and a horizontal component. So it's either or. F is the equivalent of H and V acting together. And these two fellows are joined together neatly by a triangle of forces or load triangle. It's a 90 degree triangle, V, H, and the three members, three sides of the triangle are represented by the lengths of the 
by lengths that represent the forces. Whatever angle the um, member's at, that's the angle within the load triangle. And the good thing about this is that once you have one member uh, force, whether you have a component of it or the actual force, and you have the angle, you can find all of the other three things. So it's a nice, nice um, way to convert diagonal forces to horizontal and vertical and back again. Now finally, when you come to um, uh, explain and summarize your calculations, uh, we use a summary diagram and on that summary diagram we mark, mark on the, the size of the force in each member and also whether it's tension or compression and we use this this way of doing it. If these forces, let's say there's a big load here hanging down on this member, then in the top the members will be in compression. At the bottom the members will be in tension. And you might think, what on earth am I doing with these with these arrows? This pair of arrows pushing outwards shows if I have a member that's in tension, here's a ton weight sat on top of somebody. Well, this member here that's acting in compression, one ton, is pushing up at the bottom to support the ton weight and it's pushing down at the bottom into the ground, as you might expect. If I was to hang that ton weight from a member that's in tension, There it is, one ton. And this member would be pulling down at the top and it would be pulling up at the bottom. So this is how we represent tension and this is how we represent compression. Now, this may seem a little bit disjointed, but these are the building blocks that you need in order to carry out a, an analysis of a triangulated structure. And there are three types of analysis that you can, uh, that you can use. You can use the method of joints, method of sections, and finally, if you're in a rush, you can use a lever arm method. Um, so in another tutorial, I'll be running through uh, the method of joints. So these are the, the basic building blocks and sort of the jargon you need in order to carry out that analysis. Right, hope you've understood that and uh, best of luck.